Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. So today is just a miserable rainy day outside, so I'm in the workshop today working on the Alice Chalmers tractor and trying to get it put back together. So my goal today is to put the final drives and the axles back together, at least one side, um, and try to get it back on the tractor. I've spent the last five hours just cleaning parts, trying to get all the paint off, all the grease off, get everything cleaned up and ready for reassembly. I think I'm finally to that point but I've got all my parts back here on the table and a lot of the bearings and stuff on this assembly are press fit. The, the brake drum is press fit. So out of all these jobs on this tractor, I think this is the one that has the most chance to go wrong or at least have a lot of difficulty. So let's go ahead and uh, start getting this put back together. So this right here is the axle. So this spline shaft on this and this goes into the differential and this is what goes out on the final drive right here. And it has a couple of these roller bearings, tapered roller bearings. That wasn't good. So these tapered roller bearings, one goes on the outside of the shaft and one goes on the inside of the shaft. And I got out a micrometer and I measured this and it is about a one and a half thousandths press fit. So this isn't just gonna slide on there. So we're gonna to go to the hydraulic press, see if we can get the bearings put on here first thing. All right, the bearings are press fit on. They're pressed up against this, this gear right here. So this part is done. Now I need to move on to the housing that this goes in. So this here is a brand new bearing race and it fits these bearings. It's what it seats in, it's what it rides up against. And uh, the inner bearing here, its race has to press fit into this housing. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get that in there. So we're looking down at the final drive assembly. The axle uh, goes in this opening right here. So this bearing race has to go up inside of here and it has to go in this bottom hole. And this is very difficult to try to get this one in. So I made this on the metal lathe to help take the bearing race out of this bigger opening down here. So I'm thinking if I put this in here on top of there, and it's made for this bolt to actually go in it and be able to, to press with that or to hammer it out. So hopefully I can use this to push in that bearing race. So I've got it as far as I can go with this piece of steel and I still got another eighth of an inch to get it put in there. So I don't have any of those, what do you call them? They're like a, like a bearing bushing set to press in bearings and bushings. So I've just got a regular punch here and I'm just gonna work my way around, see if I can get it to seat the rest of the way. Not ideal, I know it, but I gotta work with what I got. So on the back side of the bearing race, we've got a seal that's gonna press fit in here. That's just gonna seal around the axle, keep it from leaking. So I think I'm just gonna use this tool that we made up, see if we can use that to, to seat that. These things never go in straight. So like I said, the axle is gonna insert in this top hole and the bottom hole is where the tire is gonna to attach to the tractor. And that's what this is right here. This is your, your hub that your rim of your wheel bolts to right there. And this is gonna go in the, the bottom hole on this final drive. And then there's another bearing and seal that go in here. And I wanna go ahead and press fit those in before we try to you know, put everything together. So all the original bearings in this tractor were Timken bearings, made in the USA, Timken bearings. And everything I have been putting in is national bearings. And these, um, these are what I bought at Advanced Auto Parts and O'Reilly's. This is what they sold at the auto parts store. And I was able to just order these through an auto parts dealer, right? So 
as, I, as I've opened these up, the one the other day was made in Germany. These right here were made in Japan. And this really big one that I just opened up is actually made in the USA, and it's actually stamped Timken. This is actually a Timken bearing race. So I'm not sure how National Bearings is associated, but they either own Timken or they're associated somehow. And it's kind of a mix and match on where these are made at. But this one actually is a Timken, and that's what we're going to get put in right now. I think I'm seated. Definitely sounds like it's seated. Yep. Oh, well, that is good. So I think I'm to the point now where I can go ahead and, and put the axle in the top of the housing. But before I do that, I've got some gear oil. This is what's normally inside of the final drive is gear oil. And we're going to go ahead and lube up the bearings. And we're going to lube up the seal. And then we'll go ahead and put the axle inside. All right. Go ahead and get the axle down in there. Just like that. All right, our outer bearing race will now go in. So this end cap presses down on the bearing and keeps it tight. So this needs to be shimmed properly. So we have some shims here and we basically need to shim it so that it's the same height as the top of that bearing. And uh, so we're just going to test this out. I can feel it. See, it's actually hitting. So the shims aren't quite thick enough. So I'm going to add one more. And this may compress a little bit when we tighten this down, but uh, it's definitely not hitting anymore. So we're going to try that out. We'll go ahead and, and bolt this down. So the axle still turns fairly easy. I can turn it with just a few fingers. So there's no play in it. I think that'll work. So there's four studs that go in the bottom four holes and then it's regular bolts in the top four holes. So I just gotta get the studs in here before we mount the housing. All right, now we'll just get the housing on over the axle. So there's one more bearing race that I needed to put in here. I should have done it before I started putting this all together, but it goes on this side. And uh, once again, it's press fit, so we'll have to get it in there with what tools we have. You know, we don't have quite all the right tools. So before we put the bull gear inside of the final drive, we have to put the bearing in here first. We've got about a four and a half inch roller bearing, and this is gonna go inside of here. We will have to get some gear oil 
on the bearing first, and then we've got a nice big seal that'll go in this opening as well. And these both have to be in place before we start to assemble this all together. So the service manual tells me to put gasket sealer around the, uh, the outside of the seal. And I didn't do this on the other ones, so I hope that's not a mistake. They're higher up. This one is definitely down closer to where all the gear oil will, will be. So I thought maybe this green stuff on here was some type of a sealer, but it doesn't seem to be very thick. So better safe than sorry. Once again, we're gonna go gentle. Oops. This is where. So this part right here probably needs like two people to be able to do this easily, but I'm gonna have to put this just barely inside. Didn't seem, didn't sound very gentle, did it? And then we got this spacer. It's gonna go on the end of that shaft. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our bull gear and try to get that down in there. There we go. And now we gotta try to get this inside the bull gear piece of cake, right? All right, getting closer. So inside of here, a lock ring needs to go on. So we need to at least get it on top of the, this uh, wheel hub shaft and get it to stay there while we slide this together. So when I took this apart, the seal and bearing came out with the wheel hub and it was on there pretty good. I had to use a three jaw puller. On one of them I had to use a torch. So this is a press fit. This seems kind of crazy that you gotta put it together this way. So I got this in far enough that I was able to get the bearing on this side started into the shaft. And now I'm gonna take the bolt and a few washers. I'm gonna see if I can use this bolt to help pull everything that direction and kind of pull it together. Hopefully this works. It took an eight pound sledge for me to actually get this part. That's how tight this all was. <laughs> oh man, I broke my, uh, I think this is like a two pound sledgehammer. It was a cheap one. Well, I'm gonna see if I can get this to fit in the hydraulic press. This may be um, interesting. Gotta figure a way to hold it and press it at the same time. All right, here goes. Oh, she went. I'm afraid to go anymore. That seemed pretty good. Boy, I guess I should have started with that. Golly, this game's getting heavy. <laughs> oh. So the press got it to go all the way into this bearing. So now I'm gonna go ahead 
and use the impact to see if I can slide this bearing on the rest of the way. So now we gotta get that lock ring in there on a slot that's in this splined part of the shaft. And I actually had another viewer give me another set of these lock ring pliers. They're almost identical to the other set. These are Craftsman though, an older set of Craftsman lock ring pliers. They were sent to me by Thomas. And Thomas has sent me other things through the years for the tractors or working on the tractors. Negative. So I didn't get it on film, but we did get the lock ring in place in there. Couldn't do it by myself. Had to have Rebecca actually come out and help me. And we couldn't do it with the lock ring pliers. Couldn't get it to go around the backside. We ended up just using a couple screwdrivers and prying it, working our way around until it got in the groove. So this bearing gets covered up with this little cap. And then the instructions in the manual says to just put a little bit of gasket sealant around the outside edge. So that's what I'm gonna do. So this is just uh, Permatex Super High Tack. And my understanding is that this doesn't really harden. It kind of stays soft and just kind of seals this up. So you can see the sealant squeezing out once this firms up, we can take a razor blade, we can actually cut off all the excess and it'll look nice and neat before we paint it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the oil pan that goes on the bottom of this. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this up. I'm gonna leave it dry for now, but uh, later on before we start the tractor, I think you're supposed to put one and a half quarts of 80 weight gear oil in here. But for right now, it's just gonna go together dry so to keep everything clean. Now there is a cork gasket that goes on here and I may go ahead and uh, I might use a little bit of gasket sealer just to hold it in place. This is approved for cork, um, but I just may put a couple dabs on there to seal it in place. This cork gasket, from what I was reading, the oil will kind of soak into this and it will help seal. It may leak a little bit at first, but then it will seal over time with the oil as it works into this gasket. So I think I'm just gonna put a dab of gasket sealer at the top. Maybe put a little bit at the bottom. And I'm hoping that'll hold this in place. That may not be enough. I lost the bolts for this or I misplaced them. I had to go get new bolts before I could do this. Just one of those little things that slows the job down. I couldn't find the bolts for either one of these oil pans. I'm just gonna put these in kind of lightly since we're gonna get back in here and add oil later. Only one more thing left to do and that is gonna be to get the brake drum on the axle, and that was another tough job getting it apart. So I'm sure it's gonna be fun trying to put it back together. So we've got a round locking ring that goes right there, and hopefully this goes on fairly easy since we have the correct tool for the job. There we go. So now we've got a woodruff key that goes in the shaft. So back when I took this apart, I had a viewer suggest that I put this in the grill, like the gas grill, get it nice and hot so it'll expand, and then hopefully it'll slide on this shaft. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that, see if it works. I need to try to find ways to make this easier for sure. So we'll heat this up in the gas grill. I'll probably use some nice thick welding gloves to be able to hold onto it and press it on. We'll see how that works. The grill said it was 500 and 50 degrees. So I 
rotate this so the keyway is down. Close. Oh, it appears that I am all the way in. That was a lot easier. So I waited about an hour. I wanted to make sure that this did cool off and was nice and cool to the touch before I started to put this together. Didn't want to damage the seals going into the transmission. And it definitely did go together a lot easier than it came apart. Now in the description below I will list all of the part numbers for the bearings, the bearing races and everything I used on this just in case somebody finds this video later and they're planning on trying to do this themselves. Well apparently um, I didn't get my microphone turned back on before uh, getting this put on the tractor so that's kind of you know, like the final thing that you do and then you don't have any sound. That's kind of kind of just my luck, I guess. But uh, at least we got the, you know, we got the, the axle final drive assembly put together and on the tractor, at least the first one. Uh, the second one I'm gonna do off camera. I mean, uh, trying to move the camera around and everything to try to get the shots. I'm also having to move a light around to try to get the shots. So it is very time consuming trying to film all this. And, and overall, I think this is a very time consuming thing to do anyway. Um, I think I've got a week and a half in this, probably two weeks if you count some of the prep, trying to get all the parts clean. So probably two weeks in making this video right here, just, just for one axle. Um, so this job is a way bigger job than I imagined it would be when I, when I tackled it. I do understand why you see people that tear tractors apart into pieces and then they never go back together because going back together is probably six times the amount of work as it was to take it apart just because of all of the cleaning and, and preparation and everything just to, to get everything back together. So yeah, this job has been big. It has pro it's been way bigger, like I said, way bigger than I thought. I've had to buy several tools. I didn't have anywhere close to the right amount of tools to be able to do this job. And I've had several people send me tools. I do appreciate uh, David and Thomas who had sent me the lock ring pliers. Um, I do appreciate, I'm not for sure, I don't remember, it's been a year or two ago that somebody sent me the torque wrench and that has definitely come in handy as well. So I do appreciate the tools that people have sent me and all the advice people have sent, have told, you know, kind of told me because um, I've never done, I've, I've been a maintenance guy pretty much all my life since I was 21. So I've always torn stuff apart and fixed it, but this isn't like factory equipment or anything or automation equipment. This is, um, this is a tractor. It's just a whole different beast. And plus it's a lot older. Um, so this is a learning curve for sure. First time tearing apart a tractor and putting it together. So this is, this by no means is a tutorial. This is kind of maybe a, vi a video somebody can reference if they're doing it themselves. Um, but I am learning as I go, and uh, I know a lot of people in the comments uh, will definitely put some good suggestions in there, and, uh, you know, they've been through it. You know, they've done it before, and uh, I definitely appreciate all that. It is helpful. But uh, I think this is going to be it for this video. Hopefully, in the next video, I will have the other axle on by then. Hopefully, this, this, the transmission section here, I'll have that cleaned up and, and have this hopefully ready for paint. I still do have to put the brakes in here. I'll probably do a video trying to get the brakes in here and set. That was one of the main reasons why I tore this all apart was because the brakes had never really worked since I owned it. It was actually quite dangerous on hills. And then I had some bearings that needed replaced. This whole side over here was actually dry and the bearings were pretty well shot on this side. But um, yeah, hopefully in the next video, We'll be doing, probably be doing brakes and then hopefully painting the center section after that. After that's a bunch of small parts, fenders, seat, toolbox, stuff like that that needs to go on the tractor. So haven't decided whether I'm going to paint the wheels or not. Probably should, but I don't know if I have enough time to, to get it done. But uh, I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.